Hi viewers, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to discuss about history collection of an antenatal mother. So, when we are going to assess an antenatal mother, we are going to assess the history first and then comes the physical examination and then comes the obstetrical examination. So, first is the history collection of the mother. So, history what you are going to assess the name of the mother. The name of the mother is supposed to be with the initial that is the name of the husband also you have to ask. Then comes the age. So, when we are coming to the age of the mother, we are going to assess whether the woman is a teenager or if the pregnancy is above 30. That is like in case if the mother is going to be in the teenage, you categorize the woman or the adolescent as an adolescent pregnancy. In case if the woman is above 30 years, you will be categorizing under elderly primary gravida mother. Okay. So, these two points you have to remember when you are considering the age of the mother. Then comes the date of assessment. So, today what is the date when you are assessing the mother. So, already when we have discussed the calculation of EDD, we have said how to calculate the gestational week or the gestational period of the mother. So, here when you are going to assess the date of the assessment, you will be able to calculate this is the gestational age according to this particular day. So, you are going to write the date as well as the day of the assessment or the age of the gestation. When we come to the gravida of the mother, you have to remember gravida and the parity. What is gravida? Gravida is the number of pregnancies and parity is the number of delivery. So, whenever you have a nulli mother, that is like when it is a nulli gravida mother, it indicates the woman has not become pregnant till now, not even once. And nulli parity is like she has not delivered a viable baby till now. So, that is nulli parity. And then we have primary gravida mothers. Primary gravida mothers are mothers who are pregnant for the first time. And primary parity mothers are mothers who have delivered a viable baby. Now, till now they have live, uh, delivered a live baby. That is your primary parity mother. And then comes the multigravida mothers. Multigravida mothers that is like already she has a history of pregnancy. It is like uh, you have to consider any of the way she whether she has delivered a live baby or otherwise it is an abortion whatever it may be it is a gravida. So, multigravida is already she has become a mother but you are not worried about the end of the pregnancy. Then comes the multi parity mother. Multi parity is already she has delivered one alive baby ok that is multi parity and then come parturant. Parturant mothers are mothers who are on the labor table that is who are having delivery pain now and who is undergoing labor you term it as parturant mother and then postnatal or the puperal mother you know like once the woman has delivered you term it as a puperal mother ok. So, now you are able to identify what is nulli gravida, nulli parity, primi gravida, primi parity, multi gravida, multi parity, parturin mother and the puperal mother. So, these are the terminologies where when you collect the history you will be specifying these terms and then when you come to the marital history. So, when you are collecting the marital history, you are going to collect about when she got married that is in which year and month she got married and then you are going to ask like that is the duration of the married life and how was their marital life that is like it is not a detailed history whether they were living together that much is sufficient ok. And uh, so, some, sometimes they may have first marriage, second marriage, all those details also you can collect from the mothers. And like you can even ask about the uh, like um, 
at the time of marriage whether they they were having some uh, uh, health uh, problems or health issues that also can be noted and then we have the occupational history occupational histories play a major role during antenatal assessment why when you are giving health education for the mother according to this occupation of the husband you are going to give health education to the mother that is in case if the mother is uh, below the socio low socio economic group then your health education should be based on that if the mother is below the poverty line you can't go and tell the mother have uh, daily two eggs have mutton and all those like costly foods they don't tell them you have to eat uh, cashew and uh, badam and all those things like she can't consume it daily because they are costly in case if the mother is in a moderate low socio economic status she is affordable for all these things so when you are going to give health education for the mother you have to consider about the occupational history of the husband and also you have to consider whether uh, like he is able to run the family with the income whether this child is needed or not and like about the future pregnancies like whether he can have uh, more children like two or three children about the family planning issues to decide all these things you will be collecting a detailed occupational history of the husband next is history of present pregnancy so in this history of present pregnancy you have to ask about her last lmp the date of her last menstrual period then only you will be able to calculate the edd see already we have an video on calculation of edd that is in that video we have said about the nagel's formula of calculation that is 9 months plus 7 days formula 1 year minus 3 month plus 7 days formula and the calculation of gestation week everything we have done in that video so go to that video and you can calculate your edd okay so now in this present pregnancy history you will be collecting the lmp date and like from that date of lmp whether she has consumed some medications whether health is fine whether she has taken folic acid supplements all these things you have to assess and you have to ask according to the trimesters whether she has any problem so that is from the date of conception whether she is having any issues health issues that includes uh, hyperemesis gravidorum sometimes she will have severe vomiting severe nausea preeclampsia diabetes so any complication that is pregnant uh, like present from the day of her pregnancy all these things have to be no noted in the present pregnancy and then when we come to the obstetrical history so obstetrical history includes the history of the uh, like present pregnancy obstetrical history so that is like uh, uh, how is the plan of having a delivery so in case if it was a previous cesarean session she has to go in for the next cesarean session so this is also going to be a planned lscs so at that time you you have to tell like when she has to come for labor and all those dates and things will be done in the obstetrical history so in case if it was a normal delivery you will be tell telling like after calculating the edd you will be telling when she will have a date of confinement and when she has to admit it and like the signs and symptoms of normal labor all these things have to be explained to the mother and then when we are calculating the calculation of edd already i said you like we have a video detailed video about edd calculation so kindly go to that video and see for edd calculation it will be more clear for you and then coming to the past histories so past medical history so past medical history includes all the illness of the mother that is like from her childhood illness maybe she is having a respiratory problem asthmatic wheezing anemia uh, maybe uh, she was an hypertensive patient she was having a diabetes Mm, a thyroid uh, deficiency hypothyroidism hyperthyroidism anything ev all the medical conditions will come under this past medical history and when we come to the past surgical history we are more worried about the 
surgeries of the uterus and the pelvic region okay so you have to think of myomectomies uh, uh, any other uh, laparoscopic surgeries that may interfere with pregnancies okay so like our major concentration with your surgical uh, area that is like your uterus and the pelvic regions but again you will be collecting about your uh, thyroidectomy appendicectomy all those things also like whatever surgeries the patient patient has undergone before everything will be included in the surgical history and then we have the obstetrical history see again present obstetrical history we have dealt only with the present pregnancy your past obstetrical history will tell about the previous babies that is how many pregnancy you had how many pregnancies the mother has delivered uh, how many babies are alive whether they are being immunized whether they were given uh, breastfeeding whether they have any congenital anomalies at present what is the health conditions of the children everything will be assessed and whether that was a normal delivery or cesarean session or instrumented delivery everything will be added and when we come to the family history of the mother we have to collect about the hereditary history some uh, families they have hereditary diseases some uh, some families they have history of twin pregnancies some mothers they have uh, histories of uh, fetal distress and death and uh, like a uh, complications during pregnancies all these things would have been present in the family those things you have to enquire about and then uh, you are more worried about the number of children whether the family is affordable to have this pregnancy because like uh, like previous pregnancy whether like what is the uh, income of the family whether the health of the mother is suitable to have this present pregnancy all things can be enquired in the family history and then personal history here you are going to enquire about the habits and the hobbies of the mother so that is like how she takes care of herself how is her health habits whether she is a healthy um, mother whether she is having healthy diet Uh, whether she is concentrating on her uh, present pregnancy whether she is having any bad habits of alcoholism smoking because like you know uh, like your smoking is going to cause vasoconstriction it is going to cause either abortion intrauterine growth retardation i u uh, like um, iud sometimes like all these are complications like when they have bad histories of smoking or alcoholism so you have to tell them to stop all these things in case if they are going to continue this present pregnancy so that is with the family history so here also you will be enquiring about the number of hours like she used to take rest so that is like sleep timings in the night sleep timings in the day time all these things you will be enquiring about so this is the uh, like uh, rough idea when you are collecting history of an antenatal mother you have to concentrate on all these areas of assessment so what you have to do it first you will be assessing the name of the mother age of the mother the gravity the gravida that is like primary multi nulli everything you will be assessing and then the marital history of the mother the occupational history menstrual history history of the present pregnancy the obstetrical history and the calculation of add so when we come to the past histories you have to ask for the past medical history past surgical history past obstetrical history family history and the personal history so with this we complete the history collection of antenatal mother hope you have understood till this history collection part alone you have understood so in the next video we will discuss about the general physical examination of the mother then followed by obstetrical examination hope this class was clear you were able to understand the class so if you have any doubts kindly go and give your comments in the comment box so that we can make these corrections in the future videos okay thank you take care